About a couple of months ago, the Nightfall 2 pack with Bane and Batman got released, and a lot of people were really stoked for this guy. It actually got quite hyped up. But since then, has it become a little bit overrated? And furthermore, why does McFarlane keep using ChatGPT for their trading cards? This is going to be a little bit of a strange video considering that I'm not gonna, I really don't feel too compelled to want to approach this as an actual review. Instead, I want to approach it more so as a retro, I don't even want to call it a retrospective because I don't feel like it's even been that long. But it's just going to have to take on a whole different approach than your average review because a couple of things. One, I'm a little late to the party when it comes to this Nightfall 2-pack. I've actually had it in my possession for quite some time, but around the time that I wanted to get around to doing this video, so much shit has dropped over from McFarlane Toys that I had to cover a little bit quicker. And since then, I feel like that was kind of a blessing in disguise considering that in hindsight, we already got these figures before, but something about them being bundled together in one singular pack for conveniences, for complement complementary factors to each other. But also, this Nightfall 2-pack really does exemplify that we are at a bit of a crossroads with McFarlane Toys and the DC Multiverse brand. I almost want to say that the Nightfall 2-pack before you here is serving as a form of a statement that McFarlane is trying to make with the DC Multiverse brand saying that, hey, we have learned from things that have came before to kind of improve on, to kind of tweak, and to kind of go into a direction with your average figure that, sure, may come at a increase in price because of inflation, because of the economics that we're in right now, but at the same time, it's going to benefit you in the long run as a collector and as a purveyor of the property of Batman and the DC multiverse for the seven inch format. And as such, I don't really feel like I need to do a necessary breakdown of both of these figures uh, beat by beat like I've done before because I have tackled these figures before. Uh, the Nightfall figure here is quite frankly a repaint slash remaster slash retweak retool of a pre-existing Nightfall Batman figure that we've already gotten about two or three times at this point. And a little bit more will be divulged once we cover him. But this is also not the first time that we've gotten this Bane mega figure, which is probably one of the biggest things that was making the rounds as far as news was that people who missed out on the initial DC Multiverse mega figure Bane that was like a static Bane that came with practically nothing really as far as accessories or anything but it was intended to be the definitive bane and that figure i actually did manage to cover on this channel there's a whole separate review covering the articulation covering the details covering everything practically of course a little bit on the cruder side as far as lighting as far as camera setup and whatnot but at least it was an initial review that broke down as much as i can really talk about with that figure and in that review i also ended up being on the minority end of things when it came to my impressions of that figure. I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan, and I didn't really see what all the, you know, buzz was about, to the point where I actually ended up getting rid of the figure. It was no longer in my collection. I never had any kind of possession on that Bane figure after I filmed that review. And that was back in 2022, but frankly, since then, guys, I have a little bit of an announcement. That, to this day, is probably my biggest... McFarlane DC Multiverse Regret is getting rid of that Bane because since then, not only have I seen how much of a sought-after figure it has become, but frankly, some of those issues that I had with the figure have since sort of eroded away and have done so in double the speed as I played with this version of Bane since my acquiring of the Nightfall 2-pack. Let me show you what I mean, or at least half show you, because quite frankly, like I said before, I got rid of that original Bane, so a comparison directly in the form of visual changes as far as having the figures next to each other and those typical comparison shots that I like to do, I frankly will not be able to do that here. And time and money ran out for me to be able to acquire a Bane figure to actually have it show up here on camera. So I'm just going to have to make do with some some JPEGs, some good old-fashioned PNGs. But here's the thing, is that predominantly the sculpt of the figure has remained unchanged. You see right here that they're utilizing that Mega Figure buck, and it's an astounding bug. I mean, I really don't blame them for using the exact same figure for the most part. You see an awful lot of the tailoring of the pants and the overall suit that is still really honed in as far as that texture work, the paint applications, making sure that it actually looks like 
that very Kevlar-esque uh, kind of cargo pants texture to the pants itself as far as the riveting, as far as the pockets, and the little pads on the knee pad, and then, of course, the boots with the laces. So overall, everything is still kind of honed in here. And then when it comes to the actual sculpting of the musculature, it's still top-notch. That's actually one of the things that I still mentioned despite my qualms with the original figure. That's the one thing that I kept consistent is that, hey, there's no mistaking that McFarlane can really nail big, bulky musculature. It's one of the things that Todd is always talking about, that he loves it when characters are big and bulky and he gives in return those big and bulky toys it's one of the reasons for why venom it, by nature is a bigger character and by proxy he made eddie brock a bodybuilder is because he likes the chunky characters and bane is no exception that's not to say that he created bane but every time that dc multiverse under the mcfarlane brand tackles bane he's always going to be a massive dude and so right here you see an awful lot of the chest the biceps the shoulders no mistaking you see like the veins popping out everything but the one thing that did in fact come to mind even without having you know the previous figure in my possession I could instantly tell that the skin tone has in fact been changed up he's not as tan as he was in that original figure here he's a little bit on the pinker side on the salmon colored skin texture look as far as comparisons like I said it still looks pretty natural except from time to time it does look like there's a little bit of this weird shading going on with the skin tone that looks just a little off unless you're shining the light in a specific direction and you can kind of mask those areas but when you get to areas like for example the left arm right here and even a little bit around the chest area you see some areas where it just looks I want to kind of be a little naive and fool myself but it almost makes me think that you can kind of see a little bit of the plastic underneath. I'm hoping I'm wrong, but I don't know. I just see like certain areas where it kind of looks like you have those dark areas, unless it's by intent, unless they intentionally made those darker highlights to really emphasize the texture and the musculature on the surface area. It's almost like they made their own version of subsurface scattering, like a lot of visual effects artists like to talk about. So regardless, the skin texture is still very top notch. And then when it comes to the initial changes that I can easily kind of pick out, the most obvious one that people were able to point out even from the promo photos were going to be these blue highlights to make it look like he's lifted from the comics and I know it doesn't really vibe with a lot of people in fact a lot of people took it out of the box and one of the very first things they did was take just some basic ass black paint and just paint over them and just cover them up and I don't necessarily blame them for doing that but I gotta be honest here in person, they're a little less eyesore-like than I was kind of worried that they were going to be. Because when I saw those photos, I was like, yeah, they're going to stand out because of how hard they're trying to do the whole color shading with the blue. But now seeing it in person, I'm kind of like, you know what? It's kind of growing on me. Strangely, I don't know what it is, but the blue shading, I'm not necessarily ruling out the possibility that maybe later on I'm going to want to cover them up so I can get a more definitive looking Bane. But as it stands right now, it's not doing a bad job. It makes me forget that some other things have been kind of rectified and changed and not necessarily from a subjective point of view, not necessarily in the better light. Like, for example, the belt is a bit more minimalistic. You just have some basic uh, chrome or eroded kind of brushed metal paint to the overall piece right there for the belt, as well as the piece right here that's part of his gauntlet on his left hand that is then connected to a tube to his mask. And this time, we're using a singular term, one tube, because I do distinctly remember that the initial Bane figure had not only all of these, like, cargo straps and very busy work happening around the chest and the back area but he had a legitimate venom tank on his back there's no tank whatsoever here and that tank was connected to two tubes that would kind of go around both of his shoulders and in the long run this does a good job of kind of helping out with the articulation of minimizing the amount of tubes that way you don't really have to deal with so much of that happening with the original because that did limit a little bit of the articulation and here he's a bit more on the freer side especially since he's only got one tube right here which is decently painted with like I said that metal uh, paintbrush kind of look to the overall piping that's kind of warped into the back of his mask but at least you're only dealing with one tube which like I said depending on the person maybe some people like all the tubes kind of going around but from a practicality standpoint it makes sense for an action figure since that will at least not be so intrusive to the articulation which quite frankly is since it's the exact same buck it's the exact same array of articulation so I really don't want to cover every single point except to just kind of bring up a couple of notes is that unfortunately because it's the pre-existing buck you're going to have that same ink articulation that I'm not the biggest fan of that's very 
Marvel Legends like. I gotta be honest, it's got that Marvel Legends ankle joint where you can kind of pivot the foot up and down, but you can't really horizontally rotate. You have to kind of incline it, bend it in certain directions, and that's how you get your rotation. And plus, being a mega figure, you're gonna have some baked in joints. So you do have two joints at the knees, but then the elbows only got one bend at the joint, but you have the swivel baked in at the top, no bicep swiveling, and then no torso articulation whatsoever. It's all baked into the waist right here that is pretty fluid and still feels pretty good in hand but at the same time you'd kind of wish that there would have been a way to kind of cut a mid torso right underneath the chest pectorals right there and the wrists are a little bit more on the looser side they do have a decent bend at the hinge but rotation is a little loose than I remember it being on the original Bane figure but the reason for why that is is because unlike the original Bane I'm skipping a little ahead here he does come with an extra pair of hands fist hands to be specific and this is a very welcome addition for a character like Bane come on he's he's gonna be using his fists so why not throw in the grappling grappling hands that he has on his person along with the fisted hands it just makes sense I'm actually kind of surprised that it wasn't included with the original and that's a big thing that they managed to fix with this version right here and in my opinion my humble opinion one other thing that they fixed is that mask because now I look at that mask and despite the blue shading it legit looks like Bane with the much bigger eyes, the white kind of patch on his mouth right there, and just the overall composition of the mask to me it looks more Bane-like than that DC Multiverse one because that one, like other people were already pointing out, looked a little too Spawn-like. And frankly, that's just kind of taking me out of the illusion. So I feel like this is a huge step up along with, again, the little details of the puffs of hair on his shoulders and the the the, 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 the traps that he's got right there, very big and bulky. And just the overall refinements that they brought to Bane may not be the leaps and bounds that his partner over here in the two-pack has, but frankly, it does enough to make me look at Bane and almost make me want to apologize for parting ways for, with the original. And I feel like this is a form of redemption in that sense. Whereas Batman is legitimately a 2.0, if I'm being quite honest. This, there's enough happening here that I think the one that is truly making the statement, besides giving us the opportunity to own Bane once more and fixing some of those wrongs like some of us have committed, Nightfall Batman here is frankly the one that I look at and go, okay, this is the one that I think McFarlane is using to kind of create his statement. Because the book itself is in fact the Nightfall Batman that we've seen time and time again. We've got it before in the blue and gray version with the slightly lighter shade of gray. We had the black and gray variants that was starting to make the rounds. And then recently, it's kind of starting to skyrocket a little high up there as far as being the most utilized buck right next to the Hush Batman. I mean, I don't know if McFarlane has his favorites or maybe he's just looking at the numbers as far as what's selling, what's really ranking up there and what people are demanding and thinking, okay, I'm just going to be using that version for different parts and different uh, kind of resources and interpretations of the character. And Nightfall Batman is starting to creep up there with Hush Batman after the release of the manga Batman that's utilizing the exact same body but with a slightly different head and then the bullseye Batman which was literally just all white but outside of that it's the exact same Nightfall sculpting and here we kind of have a similar thing going as far as the main sculpting of the body you'll see right here that the, the way that the torso is designed the legs the crotch piece as well as the arms the overall build and then most definitely the articulation is identical to the previous versions of the Nightfall Buck. So not much can really be spoken there as far as the actual physical interpretation of the figure itself and the articulation. I really don't want to spend up too much time on that. But the greatest overhaul is most indeed the paint apps and color scheme. You can see right here that the blue is much lighter, the gray is much darker, so we went in two completely different directions. But ironically, in doing so, it definitely fits the bill as far as what we had going accurate for the comic interpretation. So you see right here that you, I guess, for certain people will have a much more comic accurate Nightfall Batman. But the other thing that stands out at least a little to me and not necessarily in the most positive light would have to be that bat symbol. It's m almost identical as far as paint applications, but it's now stamped onto the paint as opposed to being an actual embossed piece. And it's a bit more on the stretchy side. Along with that, again, it's another subjective thing that I'm personally not the biggest fan of is that when we get paint applications and color schemes with a major overhaul like this, I'm welcome to it. 
but I've never been the biggest fan of having those overhauls come with battle damage. I'm sorry, but I'm not the biggest fan of having a battle damage version for a singular version of a paint application or a color scheme or a portrayal. Like, you get this definitive version of Batman, but he's got scrapes and gashes and blood and things like that. I kind of wish that that, in turn, would have been the platinum version or the chase version, and then the default version is one without those scrapes, without the battle damage. I, I really hate it when they do that. And frankly, here, it's definitely treated with a bit more nuance, with a bit more class as far as like the little gashes he's got going on on his arms, on his abdomen, on the thighs, etc. And I'll be damned, the one that looks very impressionable is the blood that's coming out of his grimace on his head sculpt, which has been refined a little bit. For the most part, I feel like this is actually a completely different head sculpt. It's a little bit on the bulgier side. In fact, it's funny how... You know, through a fight with Bane, he managed to grow an extra chin. Or you can argue that it's swollen because of how much he got punched in the face. And maybe he's developing a, 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 a concussion in there somewhere. But at least it does a really good job of really impressing the pain that he's going through. Especially what's awaiting for him on his spine. So, it's cool that uh, they did manage to at least tweak it enough to really hone in on the pain and the struggle that he's going through in that iconic sequence in the comics. And in doing so, they gave us a brand new head sculpt. So it, it's befitting of the overall imagery of the battle damage. But like I said, leaning towards the sub subjectivity side, I wish we could have gotten one that's a bit more on the cleaner side and maybe the battle damage would have been reserved for a chase. And that head along with the battle damage also fits with the context that he's bundled with Bane. If he came by himself, then it would still be even more awkward. But at least... Coming with Bane and kind of putting them in the poses that are iconic to that imagery of him breaking his back, etc. It fits the bill. It fits the illusion and the overall imagery that's going to really complete someone's shelf in their collection and, and all that. However, that's not necessarily the biggest contribution or the biggest newest addition to this 2.0 that McFarlane has tossed in. As you can see, the biggest one is frankly also literally the biggest one amongst this figure. And that's going to be the fabric cape. Now, I am a little disappointed, as noted in some previous recent reviews that I've been doing with some of the new batch of figures, that they are now including fabric capes. However, some of them are utilizing a really awesome double-stitched fabric cloth, like the one that I covered on the Robin from the Batman Forever Wave. I love that cape. I really wish that they would all do that. And even in a shorts video... I covered the Tim Drake Robin figure that recently came out that's also sporting a double-stitched cape. It's a little bit on the shorter side, but at least it's got that material, that clothy material that's double-stitched, it's pleated, and it feels great in hand. It's, it's damn near premium. I frankly don't feel all that compelled to say the same thing about this cape right here. I appreciate the length. It's pretty girthy. It does a good job of really kind of honing in on that nightfall appearance as well as being able to complement certain poses, especially when you're dealing with the really bendy wire cape that's very strong and firm but also stays in certain positions and is still very malleable and bendable to certain poses. So it fits really well with the articulation that the nightfall buck is uh, known for. But at the same time, when stretching it out it like i said creates this really big uh, bombastic illusion of the nightfall batman that fits this version of the character and i do like that it's really fitting the right color scheming as far as the blue on the outside but then the black on the inside so it's very complimentary but a there's certain poses where it is a little bit on the long side so it gets a little tedious to kind of get around the feet especially when it comes to covering the real estate behind the figure thankfully it doesn't make the figure all that top heavy because again the posing and the balancing for the articulation of the nightfall buck is really really good in that sense but at the same time i really it is gonna have to make me think of which characters to put next to this guy considering how big and massive his cape is on top of that despite like i said feeling like it's double stitched so it feels pretty uh thicker than your average nylon cape like I recently covered with certain figures, I still don't like the material itself. It it just makes me feel like, I don't know, I don't want to necessarily say that it's cheap, but at the same time, it still could have been better, plus the reflectiveness is a little bit too attention-grabby that it just makes me wonder what it would have been like if we had gotten a Nightfall Batman, but with a cloth cape, similar to that of the Batman Forever Robin or the Tim Dick Robin. I'm noticing that Robins are the ones that are getting the good capes, so I'm hoping that maybe one day we'll get a definitive Batman coming up here very soon, but it's going to be having the cloth cape that I really, really love, and I'm kind of just 
coveting for. So you're noticing that with Bane and Batman, they've added certain things, little contributions and additions and refinements, more so with Batman than with Bane, to kind of, again, provide a statement, making something very clear that we're kind of entering a new staple, a new era of DC Multiverse figures for McFarlane toys. And Batman is not necessarily one to just kind of speak for itself. Much like with Bane, he got thrown in a little bit extra here on the side. Bane got the fisted hands, and Batman naturally came with two gripping hands so that he can also hold the Batarang, very similar to previous incarnations of the Nightfall Buck that has come with him before. However, they also tossed in two extra really gripping or in pain, as I like to call it, in pain hands. And if you couldn't already tell, these are pretty ideal to put them on the figure for when you want to replicate that iconic breaking of the bat screenshot or panel from the comics. So it fits the overall imagery. They tossed in some extra hands for both Bane and Batman. You got the cloth cape. And then if you couldn't already tell, you also have this nice little diorama that's kind of in the background there from the comics and from their climactic battle with the dinosaur, with the uh, different you know museum pieces that Batman had in his Batcave at the time of this battle in the comics. So it's cool that they tossed all this in, but again, I'm a man of value proposition when it comes to collecting my action figures. And so that's another question that was kind of risen up with this McFarlane Nightfall 2-pack was exactly how much value or how much bang for your buck you're getting since this thing was priced at $70, $69.99. Nice. nice. Because the Mega figures are typically about 40 bucks. The Batman figure by itself, let's say we're cutting in that extra 2 to $3 increment that's been happening a lot recently, so 23 bucks. So 40 plus 23, that's $63. So what's accounting for the extra $7? And that's when you have to take into consideration that, okay, we're getting an extra set of hands for both of the figures. You got that diorama piece. But again, we only got typical black bases for both figures to stand on. We don't have anything else premium besides that. And then, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we got ChatGPT describing the back of the trading card, which is only one trading card. You don't get separate ones for either of the figures. So it's just one for the entire set. So I do think that the price was a little inflated. However, it's a little easier to swallow when you take into consideration the statement that's being made by McFarlane is that going forward, we have to expect cloth capes for caped characters predominantly batman and maybe even superman we have to be you know taking into consideration that certain refinements are going to be favoring the character and are going to be favoring what people really want to see up on their shelf with characters that they really love like bane having the fisted hands having a little bit of the simplicity behind the design so that it favors articulation as opposed to having something that looks great because of little details but then they can't really pose a figure it then retroactively turns into a statue and I know that a lot of people like to lambast McFarlane because they're practically statues compared to other to other companies out there. But at the same time, I feel like there's a little bit of copium happening in those arguments because there's still things to be said about those 22 points right now that some other companies maybe aren't changing, maybe aren't kind of moving about and, or aren't making compromises because they're, they have to answer to other parties. And sometimes McFarlane tries to answer to one singular party, which is the community. And I feel like the Nightfall 2-pack is an answer. It may not be the best answer. It may not be the answer that you were looking for, but it's definitely an answer directly from the, the mouth themselves or himself and not just some conglomerate that says, oh, well, the stock says that Spider-Man is selling more, so let's do more Spider-Man instead of other characters. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge as to who I'm talking about. And I feel like that is where the Nightfall 2-pack kind of stands for me as more of a statement, as more as like a turning point of where we're going forward here with McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, not just for Batman, but for, like I said, other characters from the DC brand. And things are definitely going to be getting interesting from this point forward. I feel like it might start to get into a bit of a lull period for the remainder of 2024. I don't know what it is, but there's something in my gut that feels like 2024 sure is about to calm down after the big sure Walmart drop of 2024, as I like to call it. But I think that seeds are being planted for a very fruitful 2025 as far as wish lists finally getting a dent put in them with quality details like the cloth cape that makes sense for the price to go from 20 to 23 instead of 
constantly increasing the price, but then we get less accessories, we get less this, less that. And I think that the product is just pretty much speaking for itself at this point. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments. And while you're down there, hit the thumbs up button if you have enjoyed this video. Thumbs down if you did not. Shout out to our executive producers who provide and support for this channel and this content at the level 2 tier. Tom Bowling. And as always, stay humble and I'll see you guys later. Take care.